Did y'all get one, sir? Gospel tract? I'm okay. Oh, well, actually, the Bible says that none of us are okay. I know the Bible well, actually. Yeah, I, just, I have a question. Yeah, I may have an answer. I'm interested in this, this yeah. sign right here. Yeah. So it says, Jesus Christ enters the womb yeah. in order to redeem the world. Would you yeah. say, so essentially, that's humanizing God a little bit in terms of the conception of Christ in Mary's womb? Uh, well, Jesus Christ, he did enter the womb because he became a man. He did become flesh. To, yeah, he to, and he entered the womb of, of of the Virgin Mother, Virgin Mary, Indeed. and and he, he did that to come into this world to save sinners. So it's a true he statement. Did. But when you compare him to uh, a normal fetus, don't you think? Well, he a baby. A bit? No, because well, Jesus did become a baby. He did. God actually, he was a little baby. He dwelt in the, in the form of a little baby. Sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, we're not. We don't disagree on that. I'm just. Feel free to come over the, and talk, ma'am. The sign just seems to be humanizing the act of the conception a little bit. It was. It was, it was a miracle, here. though. Yeah. Well, it was a miracle. Yeah. It was it, a unique miracle. Oh yes, very much so. <laughs> but it, but it, it can't uh, be a unique miracle if it, if it is equalized to what we can do. Well, yeah, we. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Well, it's. I mean. The, like it's too familiar with like what we're used to understanding about like the whole concept i guess yeah i also have another question for you yeah i may so have another answer in numbers chapter five yeah it gives us a story uh, about two women yeah. and to, de to decide who is telling the truth about their pregnancy they're given a water to drink yeah it's a it's a, yeah water that they that is that the priest says, says to put like dirt in it, in the water, and to, and to drink it, and that it's a test of adultery, ad adultery test. But to, is that not an abortion of the child? No, because the nowhere in the in the passage do you see that she's pregnant or she there's a child involved in any way. But that it says specifically in there that if you are lying about your pregnancy, that it, your abdomen will swell up. The other one's abdomen did not swell up, and she kept her child. Yeah, it's, um, but, but something like... Something was removed out of the other woman when her abdomen swelled up and shrank back down. She was no longer pregnant. That was the lesson in the story. Well, but in the passage, you see nowhere in, the, in there that she's to, she's to take the, the, drink the water. Nothing special about the water. It's just got dirt in it, right? And that, I mean, in and of itself, you know, it's water with dirt in it. And, and she drinks it and... Yes, it would swell up her her her, um, her abdomen, and but there's no indication in there that she's carrying a child that there's any pregnancy or child involved. It's um, and people want to use. I'm not saying you are. I don't know. Maybe you are, but people want to use that to say, well, God, you know, commanded someone to murder their baby. It's like no, it's it was a, a toast a test of adultery, and that. Um, but the loss of a child was the outcome. And. And that's not the only time that, that someone lost a child in the Bible due to their disobedience. Um, God took the life of David's child after his, his sin of adultery with Bathsheba. Sure. And, and, um, and that, wasn't, that wasn't David. I mean, David, he didn't, he didn't murder his child. He, he, was, he actually fasted for, for that God would spare the life of his child. But that was God's punishment for him for his terrible sin was to take the life of his child. And... And a lot of people today don't even have that mindset, like, no, I'm gonna murder my baby, rather than David's mindset. But no, that, and yeah, in that case, um, that was God's punishment. So in this case, with the adultery test, that's also God's punishment for if she committed adultery, if she was guilty. If she wasn't guilty, nothing would happen to her. So no, God's not just to, like so, telling us to murder a baby in the passage at all. So you were saying that to teach her a lesson about adultery. Well, to punish her. To, so the child in her had to die. Well, that, I mean, that, 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 that's assumed. Like, like I said, there, there's no mention of a child anywhere in the passage. It, that's assumed. People make an assumption in there that um, maybe the child would survive even though she dies. Specifically, why, why can't we assume that she was in fact pregnant? Well, we can assume all we want, but we're, what we're assuming is not, it's nowhere to find, be found in the passage. It's not there. So, there's, so there's an, you would agree that there's an equal chance that she could have been pregnant as much as she could not have. She may have been, and it's it's also possible that if she took it and and she did die, that her baby wouldn't also die. Her baby may survive. The Lord may protect the life of that baby. The Lord can do that. But it's people read into that, and I don't know whether you are or not. But I'm saying people read into that. They say 
God's condoning murder, it's like you don't see it anywhere in the passage. People have to read into so, it. To, to further it's, it's, it's an adultery test. It's not a, a thing where God's saying uh, to murder a baby. So, so what is the work you're doing right now? The work yeah. you're doing right now? Work, like you're doing, ma'am. Thank you. The, the, work, the work you're doing right now, what is the, yeah. what is the goal to, in, in, to further enhance the kingdom? Well, proclaim the gospel. So what, what is proclaim the gospel to? So what is what does the gospel say about it? Well, oh, God says you shall not murder, and sure. it's the sixth commandment written on your sure. your your heart, your or your conscience, and your conscience. Sure. Every conscience here, that God says you shall not murder. Everybody knows that, sure. and that's the law of God in um, Deuteronomy chapter five, Exodus chapter twenty. But, and but that, that's from the original Ten Commandments, correct? The Ten Commandments that we have. The Ten Commandments that were before the time of Jesus, right? Both well, goes back to the Book of Exodus or uh, Genesis. So, but Jesus was not around, correct? Oh uh, no, he's always existed. But he's always Jesus existed. Christ yeah. was not walking on earth. He had not. Not, not, not physically, no. When Moses had the commandments, yeah. He, Jesus Christ, was not flesh at that point. No, he had not become flesh yet. So the commandments were used as a way to give salvation and to give guidance to the people, along with the letters in Leviticus. They're, the they're, they're meant as a tutor. Uh, they, they are the law. Yeah. They are, they are the things to give people salvation because salvation had not become physical on earth yet. Jesus is salvation. But Leviticus and the letters in Leviticus were the, were the salvation. I mean, that's why we have the... The things about like what's an abomination about what we can and cannot eat what we can and cannot wear how we have to go about the drink yeah under the old covenant but everything that it says we cannot do it also gives us a solution as to what we should do if we commit these acts correct hmm. so my thing is that was salvation and until jesus became flesh all of that stuff was salvation the moment that jesus became flesh he was the way to be he, he, was a full he himself says, he says, I am the way, the truth. I've been quoting that today, John 14, That's 6. That's what he said. Yeah. But he says, I give you two commandments. Do you remember that passage? Yeah, to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And we're not loving our neighbor as ourself as we, as we murder babies so, every day. So, my question is, yeah. how can we love God? How can we as Christians claim to love our neighbors if we don't take the time to sit down with folks who have to make... Abortion is not an easy thing. It shouldn't be to murder someone. It shouldn't be. It's a decision to do. Well, no one should, someone should want to murder their baby. It's not necessarily murdering a baby. Uh, it, it is. It's, yeah. it's, there's a lot more nuance to it than that. It's easy well, to just... God says you shall not murder, period. Okay, but the, if, if you want to go tit for tat on that shall not murder, there are times in the Bible where God himself has murdered. No, 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 no. Careful, so no, no, careful. No, no. God doesn't murder anybody. Moses, Moses, Moses God, and the Egyptians. No, no, no. That's Old not murder. Old Testament God was full of fury. Yeah. And no patience. No, 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 no. Anybody that stood that against was, his people was uh, Sir, you don't know the Bible that Oh, I know the Bible very well. Look at, look at the Canaanites. God didn't punish them right away. They sacrificed children for over 400 years. 400 what years. Happened? And God, and God judged them. 400 years of people sacrificing their children. What's that? So, so, look, so look at Pharaoh and his soldiers that were going after the Israelites. When Moses parted that sea, they got saved. Passing the water, the last person got out of that sea. What happened? The water came back and they went, they drowned. That was that was an act of God. Yeah. They, they, was God wrong? Died. Was God wrong? I'm not saying God is wrong at all. Okay. I'm just saying okay. you can't specifically say that God says you can't do this specific act when there are times where God himself has deemed it necessary to happen for the advancement of his people. Well, there, there's a distinction there because God is the author of life. Okay. He has the right to take life anytime he wants. Sure. And, and, and also Job recognized that. Job said, um, the Lord is given and the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of Indeed. the Lord in the midst of all his suffering. Indeed. We want to play God with human life by saying this baby's going to die. Or, you know, this person, even outside the womb, that you're going to die. And but you can live, but for some reason we think God can't do that. We we say we don't think we, we say God, you cannot be God. It's wrong for you to take life, but it's okay if we take life. I didn't say it was wrong for God. To I know take I'm, life. I'm saying that's what people say. I'm not th sure. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. I'm i I want us to look at what it means to take a life in this yeah. instance. 
Yeah. There, there's a difference in taking life. If, if I go and shoot this young lady walking down the street, that's easily taking a life. But yeah, that murder. version of taking a life is completely different from this medical procedure that oftentimes is done to save lives. No, you don't have to murder a baby to ever save a life, period. Sometimes you do. No. Sometimes the, the no. baby in the womb is poisoning the mother. Sometimes the mother, if the child was born, the mother could die. So sure, you save the life of the child, but the mother who gives sustenance to the child is no longer there. So a life is still being lost. You never have to commit murder to save someone's life, ever, period. If, 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 if you did, so, so hey, hold on, hold on, let me, let, let me, let me answer they're, that. If, if they're placed in a situation of they're, they're yeah. struggling with the idea of, I want to keep my baby, that yeah. I tried for, that I tried for, I yeah. wanted this baby, yeah. their doctor comes and says, ma'am, if you have this baby, you will die. What, what should they do? The dodge, well, one, Doctors are, can be wrong. They often are wrong. And two, that that doctor, if he, uh, many doctors don't fear God, but he should trust God and say, um, I took an oath, the Hippocratic oath, to do no harm. Right? And the Bible says, love does no harm to a neighbor. Romans 13. So that doctor should basically say, Okay, Lord, you gave me skills as a doctor, and I'm going to use my skills to the best of my ability. To I have two patients here. To the best of my ability, I'm going to preserve, try to preserve both their lives. And if one dies or if either of them die, let that be your act, your will, your act, not because I went in there and intentionally took someone's life, like going there and poison the baby to death or going there and start ripping the baby to pieces. Now that is different than delivering the baby. and Because um, you can, there often, when the mother's life is in danger, you can deliver the um, you can deliver the baby. The baby may live or the baby may die. But that's not murder because your intention is not to murder the baby. You know, with, with premeditation and malice and forethought, is to deliver the baby to try and save both their lives. The baby may die. The mom may die. I see what you're saying. The very like, fact that you're saying try though means that it's not certain that the life will be saved. No, so it's you're essentially asking the mother to make the decision to sacrifice her own life rather than her child's life. Or, or we're going to say, Mom, or it's a baby, you're going to sacrifice your life so the mom can live. So why, So my, the question is, why is, it okay, why, why is it okay for the mom to make her baby lay down his life for her sake, but it's okay the other way around? Because the mom can exist without the child. The newborn child cannot exist without the mother. Well, it's yeah, and, that, and that's, that's all the more reason to protect that child. But, but that's the right? thing, though. When you're so vulnerable, the mom, right? The mom yeah. That child, if that child is in a position, because this is not every pregnancy that is that makes it dangerous for the mom to have the child, yeah. but we're talking about a specific scenario in which a child is in a position that is causing harm, is poisoning the mother's body, that is making her sick. What situation is that? Not, that happens all the time, sir. All the time. Well, I can tell you, mo most abortions are because a mother doesn't want to be inconvenienced. I know because I, I stand out. I, I stand I outside. Used to think that, I used to think that same way. Look, look, you look at the good. I do. I, I all the time. I'm on the. I, I, look, I'm just, the just look up. That you've had conversations with every group. I have. I, 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 I've, I've talked to them. Because yes, there are mothers yeah. who are out there say, who use abortion as a fourth form of birth control. Many, 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 many do. Millions. But there are millions. Also They cannot keep, they did not want. There are instances where people can get pregnant against their will, and it is inhumane to ask. Wait, are you, are you talking about they had sex outside of marriage, or are we talking about? I'm talking, there's all types of instances. But if they had sex there's outside of marriage, that you, you consider it, and you should. Be, that, you can become pregnant from rape. Mm -hmm. You can become pregnant. There are so, there was a story a couple of years ago where a woman was kidnapped, kidnapped off the side of the road. And the man who abducted her forced her to become pregnant with his kids, and she birthed him twelve offspring against her will. Mm -hmm. There, there are situations. Where That's an awful situation. Are, but there are situations. Let's take the let's take the rape incident for example. This, the the psychological trauma alone of being raped is one thing. But to sit there and have to make the decision, let's say, let's say if it was a devout 
Christian woman, right, who had very specific beliefs on the Lord. Mm-hmm. I believe that this woman has every right, every right, to say, I know that I will not be able to love this child because of who that child's father is. That is not fair to that child. That is not fair to that child. That is just as bad as aborting that child, bringing a child into this world that you cannot and will not willfully care for. Child's already in, child, child's already in the world, sir. From the moment of conception. Once that child exits the body, that is a completely different thing from being in. There are things that the child can only do yeah. once it is outside of the body. We well, still a human being in the moment the of conception. Womb. We cannot walk in the womb. There are things that we have to go through. But does, does, that make, does that mean we're not human beings then? They, we can debate the science behind that all we want. Well, you know, Wisconsin law actually affirms that they're human beings from conception. Wisconsin law might, but not every state law. Just because Many state, state laws do. Really Kansas law affirms it. I just came from what, Kansas. What are laws, though? Opinions that people have about how we should and should not do something. Man, basic human biology, common sense, logic, all affirm it. That is not basic human biology. It is. I, I, I guarantee you, you walk over to that building and talk to them biology teachers, you're going to get a very different... Oh, I, I know I'll get I'll get a bunch of godlessness because they hate children, they hate God. No, they'll, they'll tell me what you they... You can't say they hate God. They do hate God. This, called, this, this, called, this campus believe, hates God. Sir. Yeah. You can't say that they hate God just because they don't believe what you believe. No, no, it's, it's what the Bible believes and they reject it. You can be God for I've seen the hatred of God on this campus like today. People can disagree and not hate it. Exactly. exactly. But, uh, probably... Ex- no, it's not about disagreeing with me. It's it's they, they hate Jesus Christ. But I, I have a I, I have a question for you. Do you profess to be a Christian? I know I know God for myself. So you profess to be a Christian? Yes, sir. So then you should take God at His word. God says you shall not murder. That's any circumstance. Period. Yes, He does. And in the and in the and in the case of rape, it comes up all the time. Well, oh, well, but but you're judging the baby to death. And you're not showing that to the baby in that case. You're saying you're going to die. And Jesus Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, than that one laid down his life for his friends. So let me ask you a question. You're, you're, you're saying a mom should not lay down her life for her child. She should make her baby lay down his life for her. Uh, selfishness. Isn't murder appropriate if you're saving life? So like if you, you, know what, you never had to sin against God to, to solve a problem. Like if I, or to, or to, to address the situation. Someone, like kill somebody to because they're ramp, a rampaging lunatic who's going to kill a bunch of people. Murder well, that's, the, that's, not a, that's not a baby. That's not, a, that, well, it, not what a baby's doing. Like, I'm going to universalize what God was saying about murder, and I'm just simply applying it to that scenario. That yeah. it, it goes beyond murder. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I agree with that example. There, there are situations where sometimes the murder of one person can save the lives of hundreds of people. Actually, it'd be killing. It wouldn't be murder in that case. It's why very, di- it's why, very what different is, what to. What is the difference between killing and murder? Because you can because kill. The, the commandment says, "Thou shalt not kill." It says you shall it not, you shall not, not say, murder. It does not say murder. It says, "Thou shalt not." You shall not murder. Kill. Yeah, it's it's not it's not wrong. As you shall not murder, it's it's not wrong to kill someone, to defend others, or even to defend yourself. To now to murder someone, yeah. you're. What is, so let's draw the distinction between killing and murder. Yeah. Well, it was just brought up as someone came to this campus right now and was going to start shooting people and you had to, to kill them to save their lives, that's not murder. So killing it, them is taking their life, correct? It's taking their lives. Right. But so, the, so, so you're saying that taking the life of somebody who is endangering others, that's not murder. Is that what you're saying? Taking the life of someone who they, they're going, like, they come to this campus and they are, you know, going to kill people, you know, intentionally. Endangering other people's lives. But that's very different than a baby. A baby has no, a baby cannot kill anyone. I mean, they're in the womb. They can't do anything. They, they can't. But the example of saving the, the woman who is being told by Well, you don't have to murder a helpless baby so to save someone's so life. Sir, that, that and, and again. Now. That's, well, that's what I want to, you haven't given me the difference between killing I, I, I just and did. murder. No, you haven't. And what, what the difference you gave was when it, you can take someone's life if they're endangering others. You said that that's not murder. That's killing for a cause. But that's much different than a baby. A, a baby's it, a baby's not, not a, a baby's not, not murdering their there, mom. There are times where the baby in the womb can cause sepsis to the mother. Sepsis is then you can you can try to remove the baby. Sep- 
tries. Remove the baby. That's the contingency, though, sir. That's, that's the thing, though. But, but look, look. You, can't, you cannot say, you, you just simply cannot. It, it is a fact on this earth that there are mothers who have died because of the babies in their womb. There yes, that, I, yes that, 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 that is true. And, and again, so they had so, love so, for their babies. They didn't. The thing, though, you cannot say that a baby in the womb cannot kill its mother. It can. It can. Yes, there, there, there so are. That's, yeah. So that's what we're getting at is that. But the vast majority of abortions. You said yourself. Mm -hmm. You said yourself yeah. that there are instances where it is okay. Not okay as it's a, as it's a good thing. Yeah. It is understandable to kill a life, one life, to save the life of other people. And if that's that the is standard, the, that is the same yeah. instance in this moment, sir. And this, and like I said, I agree with you. Do I think that women should go out and get an abortion just because they're having unprotected sex or they don't feel like the inconvenience of a child? I think that is wrong. That is not fair. Wouldn't that be a Why? nice thing if you could just discourage that? That would be. I do all the time. That all the time. That is the thing that we need to be. Going but I'm not going to get. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go off what God says. God says you shall not murder. Abortion is murder. Everybody knows it. But you and just. I, and I'm, you just said yourself, sir, that. It is okay to take that life of that man with that gun, endangering the life Kill, of not murder. School. It's not. Sir. It's not. It's not murdering to, to to stop to stop like an active shooter, and it's it's very it's very. Um, so it's not good to cons to c compare an active shooter or someone's got a bomb with a baby in the womb. I mean that that's crazy. So very very different situation. I'm very different. I'm still waiting on the so distinction. The woman between. who is endangered with her life with the baby in her womb is comparable to what he's saying with someone else in the general public's danger to a, a shooter or he's, he's universalizing that standard, that principle of just applying it to the... No, no an, inno an innocent, helpless baby who can't even fight back and defend himself and just say, you're going to die. No, it, it's, it's... This nation used to see a virtue once upon a time where mothers or fathers and or fathers gave their lives, laid down their lives for their children. But today we think it's crazy that that um, how you know? I'm not saying you're saying this exactly, but like, how can a mom or dad lay down their life for their baby? Well, what did Jesus say? So my question Jesus is, says, "Love does not seek baby? its own." What happens to the baby after the mom dies from having the child? What happens to the baby? Because well, oftentimes, yeah. and we haven't talked about this, oftentimes okay. when a, when a mother is in that position where she dies from childbirth, that means that the child inside her had something wrong with it, such as a defect or an infection, mm -hmm. that makes it that much harder for that child to survive outside of the mother's womb. So what happens to that child? Because we do not have enough good health care in this country to support that child on its own. Oftentimes, that um, child <laughs> will die. We have some of the best health care in the world. No, we do not. Yeah. We, yeah. we have some of the best health care in the world for people that can afford the health care. And you have that child you, 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 you have health care clinics and hospitals that that sir do you know that there are there are health care clinics in Wisconsin that will not take me as a patient because of the state that I am from because I'm not a native of Wisconsin mm -hmm. that is not good health care I could I could be severely ill but cannot get treated because I'm not from here that's not good health care sir and that that's even worse for for babies out of the womb babies have no money have no insurance who's going to who's going to care for that child christians uh, christians like that's uh, okay. the reason why so i go out to the why streets do we have so many children in adoption agencies right now looking for homes where where are these christians at that are supposed to be helping these children? well what well, we do but we to these, these parents? what's that why is it so difficult why is the process as an adopted child myself yeah. who was going to be aborted but was born the day before the the the, the, the procedure why is it so difficult in this country for anybody single in a relationship married divorced why is it so difficult for people to adopt children we live in a very I messed think, up culture I, I think that it, at the very least if you do not want a child you should give it up for adoption but it's too difficult to adopt in this country sir. so it, i'm not gonna say, I'm not, i agree with you it, it is difficult well, they, they should never consider an option to murder the baby. That's selfish. And we still have they should love the baby. Between killing and murder. Well, I, I did. I mean, you don't have to accept the definition, but I, I just... You haven't given, yeah. it, you, you haven't given a, a difference. I, I gave you the difference. Well, maybe I misunderstood it. Could you give it to me again. 
Well, it's like if you have the situation was different, but the the, the act was it's, not different. It's 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 right. It's justified to 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 kill someone if necessary, who is threatening your life or especially threatening other people's lives. But and um, that's not murder. To murder is to take the life of someone um, unjustly with malice and a forethought, and for no, no cause. You just you just want to take so, their so life. The, the difference between killing and murder is that one is justifiable. And yes. the other one is not justified. Yes, never I mean, murder, there's no, no, just, okay. no justification. So it's, who decides whether or not it's justified? Because, and, and I say this, not to play the devil's advocate, but I say yeah. this to have a conversation. Let's, going back to this example of the man with the gun on the campus, that is somebody's child that receives love and... I'm trying to listen, I'm just checking my... Um, ...received care. Yeah. Who do we say... If that was my child and I found out my child died because he was going on a rampage, I would feel like that's not justified because you just killed my child. Y'all didn't y'all didn't try to subdue him, you didn't try to take the gun from him, you didn't try to tase him, well, incapacitate no, him, handcuff him. Notice what I said earlier. So that, but what I'm saying is yeah. who decides what is just? How, as as humans. Because because we have to remember the people putting these laws and restrictions and stuff in place on these issues, it's not God. I'm marrying babies. It's, it's, it's humans making these laws. Yeah. So who among us as humans can decide what's justifiable and not justifiable? Well, that's why we have the Bible, right? But that, but sir? Oh, we, 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 we have thrown the Bible out the window. We have thrown the Bible in the trash can with our children and our common sense in the country. The Bible would say that us killing this shooter is murder. That, the Bible Where does it say that? That's taking a life. The commandment is thou shalt not kill. You shall not murder. You want to look at a certain version that changed, killed, or murder. At the end of the day, all that is is saying you shall not take a life. Period. So that's why I ask again. So would you, would you condemn an active shooter who came here and someone uh, took him out? Would you condemn that person? When I condemn the person who shot? Would you, who, who stopped absolutely the, not. No, I wouldn't. But I also would not condemn a mom for making the choice to have an abortion. To murder her baby. I would I, yeah. I, because that's not my role as I do not have the power. But, but you'll condemn the baby. To, but you'll condemn the baby to die. I don't have no. Yeah, I'm yeah, not that's the what one you're doing. condemning that child. Yeah, you are. That's not my baby come out of my body. But that child's your neighbor. My job as a Christian is to go out and do the work that Jesus did. And Jesus would never condone the murder of a baby. And minister and bring souls to Him. I'm not gonna sit here and say that because somebody goes and abort their child that they cannot receive everlasting life with God. Yeah, they can they can if they repent. That. But that's not if the message repent. that you are sending. The message the message that oftentimes is received mm -hmm. and why you oftentimes get so much pushback from people, like that, that lady who screamed at you from inside of her car, the message is so harsh that it sends the message that Christianity is saying, that Christians are saying that if you abort your child you are going to hell. That well, is we're, I'm not going to say that. I don't, I don't say that. the message that is received. Well, because then they're mishearing the message. Maybe you don't say it, but yeah. there are others who say it. Well, it is true if they don't repent. I, I add that if you don't repent. But you have to allow them the space to do that. Sometimes you don't have, you don't have it. You have, to, you have to allow the space for that. Sometimes it's not available. When they're yelling, when they're yelling at me from the car. God is unconditional. God always will. Oh, I'm saying it's not. You always have time. Two or three are gathered in my name. There shall I be as well. Another Sorry. challenge I think that you would have, like, and I appreciate anybody who goes out and just has the the bravery to go out and take on a liberal school with a message, uh, you know, that shows a certain amount of character, but. Thing is, a lot of people here don't believe in God. So how do you get? How do you empathize or get in their headspace if you want to? That's what the Bible change. says. That's, and that's a very good point because a lot of a lot of the times, the people who go, a lot of the people at this school are former Christians, which is I think more well, they never, never were Christian. than people who just were never Christians at all. They never were Christians. Yeah, like, why did they turn away? They, I mean, you should want that, to. Well, there's the there's that actually a scripture that deals with that. Let me share with you a scripture that deals with that right there. There are people who turn people away from the love of Christ because they don't show it like you command. Oh, I'm, I'm showing it today. People see it as, as hateful because they love their sin. They hate God. Jesus said, um, the world hates me because I testify of it that his deeds are evil. It's Now, I know I know that I probably uh, wouldn't have had a hostility today if I told people, God loves you. It's okay to live in sin. It's okay to fornicate. 
That's what they want to hear. I'm not here to comfort them in their sin. I'm here to tell them the truth, no matter how much they hate it. Now here's, to address um, what you said earlier, let me see here. Ah, here we go. First John chapter 2 says, regarding um, people who, you know, you say they were former Christians or they left, says, First John chapter 2, they went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it would be shown that they not that they all are not of us. So they, when if they leave, then they they show that they never were of. Who said that? That's in First John chapter two. Well, Jesus said it. God says it. Who says it specifically? Who is the one speaking? Well, God used God. Yeah. Well, every word is spoken by by God. He uses men to to write to 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 write it down. But yeah, but. What's the word of God? Thoughts about people. Yeah. Sir, a human being wrote those words. No, God, God did. A God, you well, God, God used a human being as his instrument. Paper and sat down at a desk and write that. No, he used people as vessels. Yes, to his vessels for him. Yeah. But it's up to us to decipher exactly. where, where those the Bible says, "Beware of false yeah. prophets, for they are wolves in sheep's clothing." There are people who could, I could easily flip to a page in that Bible and completely change the context and meaning behind that scripture around for my have. own benefit. That yeah. is so easy to do. Yeah. The, the, the way that I could do that easily, so many people could do that easily. So the problem is... You already kind of did with, with Numbers chapter 5. I, <laughs> sure. If you, that's how you want to take it. The problem with that is, sir... That's what makes it so difficult in this day and age to stay a Christian unless you know him for yourself. Nobody can sway sway my belief in God because I, I know him for myself. He brought me through too much already that you just can't explain. There's nothing but the You should trust him then. I do not, your own under, not your own understanding. But my Take him as a word. You have to understand that there are people who have been victimized and bullied by this religion. By people not by Christianity. Who are not doing what God did. They're, they're yeah. being victimized by people who profess There's to be followers of Christ. Prophets, so by, by those who profess Christianity, yes, but not by true Christians. Yeah. When, when you have people who only preach condemnation, they're, they're, I'm not saying that, that you are doing this, nor yeah. am I saying that the church you belong to are doing this. Yeah. I'm saying that there, there, are, there are Christians, there are people who call themselves Christians yeah. that only preach condemnation. If they are oh, not I, I'm, I'm aware. Exactly I, I, I would agree with you if they're not preaching the gospel, yeah, they're, they're not loving people. Just so you know, I gotta, I gotta go soon. Just, just so you're aware. Like deliver rules and stuff to kids. Like do this, don't do that. But you, don't like, you're not, you're not why. given exactly. like that whole. Oh yeah. Everybody can relate to the frustration of that. So actually, I, I, I can't. <laughs> I didn't grow up in the church or in a Christian home. So, but I know, I know what you're talking about. And there's yeah. a lot of resentment for like parents and who don't like explain how a rule or how a certain. But, 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 but before, I, before I go. If you were to die, and for both of you, really, if you were to die today, where would you go and why? Well, I would go to heaven. I know that. Why? Because God loves me, and I love God, and I, and I live by Him, for Him. And I know that if I was doing something that He didn't approve of, He would let me know, because He speaks to me. I, I, we talk every day. So, and that is that is my belief. Mm -hmm. okay. And... I live by his two commandments. I love my neighbor and I love the Lord with all my heart. Well, you should love every baby in the womb then. Every I baby. Do. Mm -hmm. I do. You're justified. You've justified murder so far. No, I'm not, I'm not saying murder of every baby. You have also justified murder today. No, we I haven't. Both no. Murder. I don't just, no, I, I'm you against all murder. Yeah, no, it's not It's not murder to defend people. It's, it's, um, I agree. I agree. It's 
That is the first time we have agreed completely. <laughs> it is not murder to defend people. Yeah. And so that's, but yeah, just take God at his word. And do you, do you read the Bible every day? Every day. Without fail? Bless ya. <laughs> yeah, every day without fail? Every day without fail. Good, fail. good. A lot of people don't. They profess to be Christians. And that's just something that I was raised on doing and that I enjoy doing. You know, it's not... But it, but it also is not my personal belief that I have to go out and force people to... So, like, free, free reading. Force people to, you know, ascribe to this. I show them the love of yeah. Christ. Like, nobody should come up to me and say, you are very nice for a Christian. They should say, oh, wow, you are very nice. And it's just hard. I'm a Christian. You know? Hello. What's that? I couldn't hear what you said, ma'am. It was a little windy there. You hear what she said? I don't think she's speaking English. Just a question. Do you go downtown like on the weekends? Have I seen you like in other locations? I have been there before. Okay. Um, I've talked to like people preaching. But yeah. Maybe it was you. Maybe I've preached before. downtown before. So, like right in front of like the dance clubs and stuff? Yeah, like, I, preach, Friday, Saturday I, I preached there before. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it was you. So. Could have been. Um, but it's yeah. been wonderful. Oh, no, you're just leaving class. <laughs> you're just oh, leaving class. Leaving class to go to another one. To yeah, you're, 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 you went to the Christian Daniel. classroom. Daniel, thanks for keeping it civil, man. Of course. And the Christian okay. classroom is just about ending. <laughs> All right, you have a good day. Thanks for, ta thanks for talking with me.